Doll Fairy back again with another installment of BJD Weekly. This week we're going to be tackling the issue of BJDs on a budget. One of the things that a lot of newcomers to the hobby find intimidating is that initial investment. I get it, BJDs are super pricey, ranging in the hundreds of dollars for a doll. It can be super scary to drop hundreds of dollars on a doll that may or may not look anything like it did on the website. Which, I mean, it usually does, just between you and me, don't worry. First thing to bear in mind is that this first doll you're buying is an investment. It's an investment in entering the hobby. It's an investment in a creative medium that you're going to have for years to come. I've seen people that still have their dolls from 2002. The first thing you're gonna do in trying to figure out what doll is right for you on a limited budget is to set a budget. Basically set up a framework of what you're willing to spend and over what period of time you're willing to save that amount. I recognize that a lot of people that wanna get into the hobby are younger teens who maybe see this cool hobby but can't figure out how they're gonna save up that amount of money. Well, unfortunately the answer is it might take a little longer. But hey, I first discovered BJDs when I was like 15. I saw the price tag and thought, oh my god, I'm never getting into this. Then, I had just turned 18, went to a convention, got a raffle ticket for going to one panel, and then, hey, I won the grand prize. An entire MSD-sized doll, all to myself, for nothing. Of course, this relies so much on random happenstance that it's not going to be the case for everyone. But I think it proves the point that even if you're discouraged initially, eventually there is going to be some way that you end up having your first doll. So for whatever reason you're looking into buying a doll uh, at a lower price point, whether it's a uh, lower budget on your end or not really wanting to invest in a hobby you're not 100% sure of yet, well, there's a lot of solutions to this. On the Den of Angels Wiki, there's a page full of dolls of all sizes under $300. I'm not sure if non-members of DOA have access to the wiki, but I'm going to include a link in the description of this video just in case. If you want an invite to DOA, because the forum is invite only, you just have to ask an existing member of the hobby to send you an invite link. You can do this in the Tumblr BJD tag or on Facebook, anywhere there's a huge collection of existing hobbyists. Looking at that list on Den of Angels though, you're going to maybe feel a little intimidated by this huge list of dolls at various price points. Since so many dolls and so many names can be so intimidating, I'm going to list a few of the companies that I would personally recommend at a lower price point. So, of course, the most mentioned budget BJD company is Resin Soul. A lot of people kind of pass them over because they're like, oh, it's cheap, it's not good. But I actually really like a lot of their sculpts. Resin Soul May and Resin Soul Song are very popular. Another great thing about Resin Soul is that unlike a lot of BJD companies, they offer a huge variety of fantasy resin colors. Blues, greens, purples, grays, perfect for any sort of fantasy character or just, you know, your favorite color. As well as their, their full line of fantasy colors, Resin Soul has a ton of fantasy parts. They have elf-eared sculpts, they have sculpts with dragon parts, which I really want. I mean, the dragons have abs. It's really cool. Also worth looking into is Bobobi, which is kind of a mouthful to say, but is Resin Soul's sister company. They share a lot of the same sculpt names, and, you know, if you consider one, consider the other. Now, if you're looking for something with more basic aesthetics, none of that extra stuff, no fantasy parts, I might suggest you look at Miro Doll, which is a very affordable uh, option for people who just sort of want the basic male-female doll body. Something I've often seen is people buying bodies at Miro Doll and heads elsewhere to cut down on costs. A company that's less appreciated, but no less cute, is Five Star Doll. I've seen a lot of their sculpts come out really adorable, and they're a really good affordable option for anyone who wants to spend a little less on, the, on their first doll. The companies I've outlined are just a small selection of the available and affordable BJD companies. Like I said, there's the whole list on Den of Angels. However, if none of the companies that you find at a lower price point appeal to you, it might mean compromise. What do I mean by compromise? Well, 
Compromise could mean saving up longer. It's just a fact of life that you might have to save up a little longer for the doll you want. However, if you want that doll right now, there are other options for you. I'm going to talk about doll sizes at length in my next video. But for now, what you pretty much need to know is that within the same company, the smaller the doll, usually the smaller the price. Let's say you want a Fairyland uh, SD, one of the Feeble 60, 65. Well, you might consider going for a mini fay instead, or even a little fay, which I have, and they're really cute and pose just as well as their larger counterparts. In fact, some of these lines even have the same facial sculpt. Let's say you don't have money for an MSD or SD sized doll, but you still like that more mature aesthetic. Uh, doll Zone has a couple of special dolls, uh, that's the name of the category, that has a more mature body but is about this tall. They're really cute and have really interesting heads, or you can hybrid from another company. Another option that you might consider is, as I've said before, buying secondhand. Buying secondhand ensures that you're paying less, usually, than you would for a new doll. However, it really depends on how the market is at the current moment. Also secondhand, you might have the option to buy project dolls. Project dolls are basically dolls that need a little love to get back into proper condition. With a project doll, you're going to find that at the end, you have a doll that's just as good as a new doll but that you've put a lot of labor, energy, and effort into, and that you might have bonded with even more as a result. You've also saved a lot of money because most project dolls and project doll parts are sold at a fraction of the price that they would be otherwise because they're considered damaged goods. Let's say you've saved, you're dead set on a more expensive company, and you're prepared to spend that much. Hold on, however. If you want more bang for your buck, you might consider waiting until that company holds its next event. Now, a lot of doll companies hold events where if you spend a certain amount or buy a certain product, they'll throw in extras free of charge. Fairyland is known for having a lot of events. They'll throw in uh, little fake face plates and even SD and MSD sized heads. A lot of other companies also have events where they'll throw in clothing options, fantasy parts, or even entire limited edition dolls that you're not going to be able to buy elsewhere. An entire extra doll just because you chose to buy your doll at the right time. Doll Chateau and Doll Zone are especially notable examples of doll companies that will throw in an entire doll just because you bought at the right time during an event. No matter your price range, no matter your budget, you can have a BJD all your own that's super cute or super scary if that's your thing. It doesn't matter how much money you put in. A lot of the time, it really just depends on how much effort you're willing to put into the doll, making it look great, making it look exactly how you want it to. If you have to save a little longer, well hey, so did most of us. I waited since I was like 15 and entered the hobby just because I was lucky. If it takes you a little longer to save, then so be it. Um, unfortunately, that's just a consequence of being in a luxury hobby. However, you're allowed to join in on the fun, even if you don't have a doll yet. I've seen a lot of people that just love to have people talking about dolls with them. If you don't have a doll, so what? Talk to other hobbyists, join in the tags wherever, on whatever site, uh, and most people are willing to talk about your doll plans, your wish list. Basically, all the social parts of the community don't really hinge on you having that physical doll yet. Um, of course, the hobby is about, you know, customizing and owning the doll, so you might want to get a doll eventually, but for now, if you can't afford it, no big deal. Most people are very welcoming. That's about it from me today, but I hope you found this video helpful in planning your BJD on your budget. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget to tune in next week because I'm going to be talking about how to choose a doll based on aesthetics and whether or not BJD size matters.